Hello everyone, today on Scottish Memories we are chatting to Claire Gray. How are you all? Hope you are all happy and healthy and well out there wherever you are. Yesterday I have the honour of chatting to Claire Gray today and I am so, so excited about this. Just before we get started, if you haven't already, please remember to hit like and subscribe to the channel or of course follow wherever you get your podcasts as well. Remember to hit that follow button on there as well. But today it is an absolute pleasure to be chatting to Claire Gray. Claire is a TV and theatre actress who you will know from things like River City, Tommy's Honour, The Wrong Guy, Karina, Willie and Tig, not to mention also following in her father's footsteps and joining the brilliant cast at the iconic King's Panto every Christmas. Claire, hello, how are you? I'm good, I'm good, I'm delighted to be here doing this with you. It's an honour to have you on. It really is a pleasure to have you on. Thank you so much oh, for finding you. the time. Oh, I'm so delighted to finally, but we've had a few interruptions and in my fault, but now we're here, so I'm, I'm, I'm looking the, forward to you're it. A busy, you're a busy lass. That's a good thing. Yeah. That's a good thing. <laughs> so how have you oh, been anyway? Are you good? I'm good, yeah. I'm really good. Um, I'm happy now that there seems to be sunlight during the day. And it's not all dreek and yeah. there was a period it just felt dark all the time yeah it felt my, like my, i was waking my, up and my dad has been commenting on that quite a lot he's like oh mm. it's been dark and now the sun's out he seems to have got a little bit of cheer about him a little but bit. it makes it it really does make a difference i mean I, we were out me and my daughter were out, were out today and just having the sunshine and it's just lovely it just makes a total difference yeah, we had we had our daughter down at South Queen's Ferry today, just wandering about because she's only eighteen months, so <gasps> having a little wander and showing her the bridges, even though she doesn't care about the bridges, but we're showing her anyway, and she's just That's, doing, yes, she will one day she'll care. Yeah, one day, one day she'll realise how iconic they are. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> she'll have no choice. Exactly. I'll just keep telling her. <laughs> I know. Well, that's it. That's it. Um, and how about health wise and everything? You good? You happy? Good, yeah, feeling good. Um, just got over a slight cold. I was terrified it was um, COVID just because it puts so many things, well, every plan you seem to make, it's like you're so anxious that will it go ahead? And um, But no, all good. Um, yeah, just, just working away. And I, know, I, I seem to be like one of the few people I know that haven't had it now. I've not had it either. Really? I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I totally... <laughs> eventually the government's going to grab you and me, take us away and take our blood. <laughs> I know, but I've got, I've got a few friends that haven't had it and it's bizarre because, I mean, you know, it's going to be one of those things. It's just, it, we will eventually get it, but it is when, but I think you're, I'm totally always on just going, is it going to be this week? Yeah. I'm working next week. What if it's next week? Oh my God. Um, but, and now the lateral flow tests are not free. No. And as of today, there's it's not mandatory to wear masks either. It's I know, all I know. I think I think we've it's, kind of reached that point where, yep, yeah, it's we, we just live with it now. We, we just, just live with it. it. Yeah. Well, I'm going to continue wearing my mask. That's for sure. Yeah, I think I think we are as well. At least for a yeah. while. At least it doesn't. Well, it, for for me, it doesn't. It doesn't bother me, and I know it's it's safer for other people if I wear it, and it's also safer for me. So I'm just going to continue, and also yeah. see if you're having a. See if you're having a bad day and you don't look great and you feel a bit shy and you see <laughs> someone you know and you can't be bothered speaking to them. Yeah. You can just use the mask thing as a, a wee disguise. So I, that's good. I can't remember who it was, but I, there was a celebrity. I was watching an interview with him on like this morning and this was fairly early, fairly early when, when all of this kicked off and they had, they said they'd fallen in love with the mask because mm -hmm. the first time in like 20 years they could go and do their own shopping and Asda and Tesco, no one knew who they were. They were just like, I love that's it. Totally it. Be Add sunglasses. Angels. Yeah. Well, that's it. Yeah, unless Add they actually have a mask. Or... Unless it says on their yeah. mask. Or one of those that's actually got the bottom of their face. Yeah. Printed, you know, you get the bottom of the face printed yeah. on. It's like, unless it's that. They were like, yeah, it's great. Love it. No one knows who I am. It's the first time I've shopped in Asda for 20 years. Oh, God. I know. I know. Well, no, I'm a fan. I'm a fan of the masks. Uh, I'll jump. I'll jump right in then. So, where, where did you grow up? 
So I grew up in, I've always grown up, well, I grew up in Glasgow. Um, I grew up in Kelvindale. Right, okay. Um, and I literally lived, so there's Clevedon Secondary School, and my back garden, if you jumped the wall, you were in the grounds of the, the school. I mean, that's um, that, you probably don't have to wait, wait till you hear the bell in the morning no, and then just that's jump it. over Well, I, I was desperate to go. So I went to Kelvindale Primary and all my friends were going to Clevedon. Right. And my mum and my dad, and my stepdad, were like, we want you to go to Notre Dame, which was um, an all-girls school, right. Catholic all-girls school, the only um, non-private girls' school. And I was like devastated, totally devastated that I was going to be sent there. Firstly, because I was w- wouldn't be with all my pals. Yeah, and that's secondly, a big thing. That's all a big girls. Thing. Yeah. So I wasn't yeah, going into the teenage years. I wasn't looking forward to that. Anyway, I absolutely adored um, Notre Dame, which is now it's now boys and girls. They've they've changed that in the past few years. So you just missed out. So I just missed out. But no, I loved having no boys. It was great. Um, but all girls together with lots of hormones, it was a bit mental sometimes. You yeah, know? I can imagine. Lots of yeah, scraps but... in the ca- cafeteria. And... Is that what I was going to say? I can imagine it got quite um, vicious. Is maybe that oh, the right yeah. word? Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, it could. It, could, it definitely could. Um, and then I, in my fifth year, I got into the Dance School of Scotland for the musical theatre course, which was at Knightswood Secondary. Right. Um, and I went there, um, but I didn't finish the course. It was a two-year course. I didn't finish it because I was a teenager and I didn't like being told what to do. Yeah. And I left, and but I stayed at the the at the school to do my, um, my hires and stuff. But if I could turn back time... The amount of definitely. things, the amount of things, if I had just... And uh, you know Stuck what? In, I know. My mom somewhere will be listening to me going, see, I told you, if if I, I just kept going at that little thing a little bit, if I kept my piano, I quit piano lessons twice for stupid How reasons. good would it be now to be able to? I know. I know. Like, you know? I, I, because like, I, I, I trained musical theater. And oh, did you? Yeah. My flatmate could play piano and he was in incredible on the piano mm. and all of us needed him all the time because we'd always need to rehearse a song so we're great and i was like how good would it be if i could do this if as well do and i quit for silly reasons one because the, the the and it was always the teacher it was never my fault it was never oh my yeah fault. of course but it, when you're young it's nobody it's it's always everyone else yeah yeah totally. the first time the teacher was too strict and i didn't like her but i was really young then i was like early mm. primary school primary two three and then later on, I was in high school and I tried to pick it up again. And he just smelled really bad of cigarettes. <laughs> and that put you off. Put me off. Put me <laughs> off. I didn't enjoy coming around. Oh. Well, do you know, that's funny, actually. So I'm, at the moment, I am, um, I've actually got my theory test tomorrow. Because I don't drive. Ah. Which is so annoying. So I've got my theory test tomorrow and... Well, I'm hoping I'm I'm hoping to be sitting my test at the end of May, but at the moment it's looking mental to try and book uh, your, your be test sort of anyway. Get back into it now, really, won't they? Well, that's it exactly. It took me forever to to book my theory test. Um, but when I was younger, so I was probably about seventeen, I started lessons and I quit because my the the driving instructor. I hope he doesn't see this. Uh, my <laughs> driving instructor. It was the height of summer, and he he used to wear in the car, so it was like an hour less, and he would wear this brown leather jacket, like a bomber jacket, and it stunk. Yeah. And it totally put me off. I was like, and then I just didn't didn't find another instructor. Perfectly yeah. lovely man. Nothing, you know. But, again, teenager. <laughs> but I get. But well, I was opposite. But that when I turned seventeen, I was I am past. I'm driving. You know what I mean? Because. <sighs> I wanted, I wanted that freedom. Absolutely, mm-hmm. I wanted that freedom. And I failed my first time, but all the mm-hmm. best drivers pass second time. <laughs> well, I've he- that's what I've heard. So I'm going to, um, I won't be too hard on myself if I don't pass first time. I didn't even pass in my driving instructor's car. I passed in my mum's car. Oh, did you? Yeah, oh. yeah. Yeah, well, I sat at the first time in my driving instructor's car. 
he went away on holiday two weeks before my test and came back the day of my test, took me out for an hour before when I'd been just, my mum was great, actually. She used mm. to just sit in the car and say, let's just drive. Let's go wherever you want. And for hours, she would just sit in the car with me playing my cassette, because I'm old, <laughs> playing my cassette in the car. And You're she just old. let me drive. And get used to it. And then I was that used to, this is my excuse, I was that used to that car when you're still learning a different car, Mm. big thing. Totally. And I jumped back into a driving instructor's car and I just, the bite point was different Mm. and I was was all over the place. So I never went back to him. I never went back to him and I just kept driving in my mom's car, booked my test and did my test in my mom's car and passed, no problem. See? However, we did used to call the car the cow, and she hated it because the <laughs> last three the last three letters of the license plate were C O W. Oh really? Oh my god! I bet yeah. So we called the car the cow, and she hated that. She hated. Oh, I bet she did. I wonder why. Yeah, I don't know. I've no idea. <laughs> but then you can imagine going in the house. I'm just going to take the cow out. It's, yeah, the cow out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not a nice thing. So are you all ready? Are you all prepared for your? I think so. I think so. I mean, I don't theory test th- anything. Theory with me is pretty. It's but I, I am choice. quite good at. Re- Pardon. It's multiple choice. Well, that's the thing. So a lot of it, I've been doing the app, and I, I'm passing on that, and I feel like a lot of it is common sense. Um, mm-hmm. and I'm pretty good. I think I'm pretty good at retaining information and stuff. So, oh, fingers crossed. I'll let you know. I'll let you know how I get on. Well, here's here's another little gem about me. For a, a short period, <clears> I I was a driving instructor. Oh right! For a short period, I only did it for I trained, and then I only did it for a six about six months because I didn't enjoy it. I didn't. Enjoy you didn't it. enjoy. It. I suppose it's one of those things you'd have to because you're spending all your time in the car. That's so you'd have to enjoy it. So. Yeah, that wasn't so bad. That wasn't so bad, and I didn't mind the teaching element of it. It was the fact that you had to really push to get lessons. You almost had to be a right. salesman and really push and say, oh, "Do you want right, lessons? Okay. Do you want lessons?" So if you don't, you don't get paid. Hmm. And I didn't like that. I didn't no. like that at all. So, I'd, but um, like you, you'll be fine if you're if you're doing your your uh, test on your phone over and over and over. It, there's only a set amount of questions. Yeah. So if you know all them, you're fine. You're I'll fine. be fine. I'll be fine. It's your hazard uh, perception. That's the one you've just got to. Well, that, I know. Oh God. See, for, see, for anyone, see what for happens. Anyone, Do you know what? I can sit it again. There's, there's yeah, no. Yeah, you can sit as many times. Like for anyone, for anyone, like maybe from around the world, we should probably say the hazard perception is a video that you have to, which is a car driving mm. along, car point of view, and you have to click when you think when you see a hazard. You, mm-hmm. But if you click too much, if you're just clicking on everything, then it it goes no, you're cheating. So it's it's a it's a funny little thing to get. Mm. Well, I've heard as well with the with the practical test. Now you have to you have to do the um, sat nav. I've heard so, that. Yeah, which I don't know. I think I might struggle with that because that freaks me out. Yeah, we'll see, I'm sure it'll be fine. But yeah, that's fine. That, that's fine. I mean, they, they, that. they, they, I mean, they used to. I don't know if they still do. They used to do about where the driving instructor was just going to sit back and just give you directions and see if you took mm. directions. So essentially that's the same thing. So I sp- well, I suppose, yeah. Yeah. But um, right. the, I, I have to say, I feel sorry for you because although I did have to do a, a advanced theory for the short period I was a driving instructor, when I passed my test, there was no theory test. There was no Ooh, theory test. Right, okay. In the car, after your driving test, the instructor would just give you a couple of questions, and I mean a couple of questions, and they would have a little book with street signs on it, and mm. they would go, what's that one? What's that one? What's that one? And then they go, right, okay, you passed. And that was it. Like two, three that questions, a couple of pictures. And I remember after the, when I did pass my test, he gave me a couple of questions, and he went, well, you're – your theory's not great. If you promise you'll read your highway code, then I'll pass you. I went, yeah, of course. Oh, promise, promise, tonight. In a drawer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Never to be seen again. Never <laughs> and here you are. You're, you're fine. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah, yeah. I a mean, good driver. I think so. I hope so. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so yeah, I'll get, get back. I'm talking about blooming driving instructors. So, I, so like, you didn't, why did, why did you drop out of the dancing? You just didn't like it. 
it was just <clears throat> being a teenager uh, being a teenager and my so when I was auditioning so it was a, it was quite a lengthy audition process and it was my stepdad he was ill at the time and he had really pushed me for it and really wanted me and he passed away in the summer and a couple of a, like a week or so after he passed away I got the letter to say I'd got in and he never he never found out that I'd got in which was right. heartbreaking for me and then obviously a teenager you're going through grief and stuff I just wasn't I my my heart wasn't in it and I think it's it's such a fantastic um, school, the dance school Scotland. And obviously I was doing the musical theatre course. You really have to work hard, you know? Yeah. Um, and I just wasn't, I just wasn't, that wasn't my, you know, um, my focus. So, but it is, it's one of those things I go, God, I wish I could turn back time and stick it out because I've got loads of friends who, um, who, who were there um, and that were in years ahead of me and stuff. And they just loved it. They've, it's so many good memories, but it's one of those things. Yeah. It's one of yeah, those things. One of the, hindsight's a great thing. It, it really is. It, it, it really, really. Can you dance? Can you dance now? I No, I, I, I used to be able to dance. So, but it's, again, it's, you have to, you have to keep at it. I yeah. mean, sometimes, like, during Panto, sometimes, like, they just know, <clears throat> just don't give them a dance. <laughs> I mean, I, I could have felt really worked out, but I'm just, I, I think it's like, a, it's a muscle memory thing as well. It's such yeah. a, you know, coordination and everything. If you're not, if you don't keep at it, it kind of goes. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I, I loved dancing when I was younger. Um, but yeah, I can still bust a move when I've had a gin and tonic. I mean, that's a different thing. That's a different <laughs> That's a total <laughs> different thing. Since you brought it up, if you don't mind me asking, how was the panto this year? Because you, you was, joined the team at the King's Edinburgh panto this year. Yeah, it was fantastic. Um, yeah, it was great. I mean, so that that's my third third panto at the King's. Um, and obviously it was, a, it was tough going into it just because I knew there was going to be so many firsts without my yeah. dad. Yeah. Um, and... I mean, the first day in rehearsal was just bizarre because we, we were rehearsing in the same space and you just, I just kept expecting them to walk in and things. But I mean, I'm so close to, to Grant, Alan and Jordan. Uh, they really, really looked after me. And it's just such a wonderful company to be a part of, you know? Yeah. So it really, it really helped me actually. Um, and I felt really close to my dad, you know, being in the theatre. And it was, as, as you know, he loved and adored Panto. Um, so no, I definitely, I think it, it was, I had nerves about it, but it was, I was so delighted to, to be there and it's such a great time. Um, it's it's hard work, two show it's day. Oh, it's a really hard graft and it's an incredible Hard graft, but it's it great well. fun. Yeah, I don't it's think people fun. realise how hard graft it is. Yeah, well, it's just, it's the six days a week to, I mean, it's, it is tiring, but it becomes your life. Yeah, and that's the, that's the thing about it. I mean, you know, everyone in the building, um, all the crew, you know, all the ensemble, um, we all become so close, you know, yeah. because you you see each other all the time for those nearly it was nearly three months. Well, it wasn't this year or well, last year, um, because we got shut down. But it, no, it's great. It's great. Yeah, yeah, you just got shut down, didn't you? We went into another many yeah. restrictions and that was so well that was the thing because we, there'd been because we were obviously <clears throat> being really careful um because none of us obviously wanted to to catch covid and, and put that. everything in jeopardy and um you know so we were really chuffed that we got to that we're going god we're we're doing all right you know um and then were you essentially living all, in a little bubble just all of you yeah so right. there wasn't, we weren't going out and like, usually, you know, after the show, you might go and have, you know, a drink in the bar next door and stuff. And, but we just, we, we weren't doing that just to be safe. Yeah. Um, and for your own peace of mind, you know, you'd hate to be the one that, so, um, and then there was obviously, there was whispers about, oh, Nicola's making her announcement today. And there was people, that, you know, 
all the stuff that was going on in Edinburgh at the time, people were just dropping all the time, you know. Yeah. It was just, it seemed to be everywhere. Um, and I was in the wings and um, Stuart, the sound guy, just went, oh, that's it. We're going down on Christmas Eve. And then it was like, you had to go on and, yeah. and perform. And in the back of your head, you're just going, oh, no. I mean, how long did you um, got about, what's that, about a month and a half, two months almost? Yeah, we got. I think we got about, I think we got about six weeks, five or six weeks, which is amazing for, you yeah. know, we did really well to, to, to get to theaters, that point. Theatres were always the first place. They were always yeah. the first place it to It was play. such a shame, but, um, you know, we were... We were sad, but it was it's just one of those things. And you know, Nicola was protecting us all, so it was, you know. Yeah. It's, it is what it is. Um, but yeah. No, it did that, that's brilliant. I'm 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 uh, I was very uh, I, I love I love, love, love the King's Panto. Big part of my youth. I can't wait to take the little one there. She's still a little oh, bit my too goodness. young. She's still a little bit too young. She wouldn't get it right now. Yeah. But well that's it. My the year before, uh, well, in between, from before lockdown um, until the last one, my daughter, so two years had gone by. Um, so when my daughter came the, the first time, she was a bit, she loved it, but didn't, like you say, didn't know what was going on. Yeah. It was just bright lights and things. But um, Which is some year, element she, they love. They still love Yeah, totally. Lights, well, it's but... a sensory thing, isn't it? You know? Yeah. Um, but last year when she came to Sleeping Beauty, she was in the front front row and it was like her face just beamed the whole time and she still talks about it. So she says, my mummy's works panto. So, cause she can, that's the only thing she's seen me do. So yeah. um, it's just it's so lovely. Yeah. And the teams are great. Like I say, like you already mentioned Alan and Grant and Jordan. I've got to say, I love them to bits. I've got yeah, a little bit. Just... I've got a little bit of a man crush on all three of them. I think they're brilliant. <laughs> I think they're absolutely. Oh, they are. They're they're fantastic, and I learn so much from them. You know, and um, just just watching them, they they're so good at what they do. So that's a real honour as well to to work with them. Yeah, uh, we'll get back to the, the Scotland really. So growing up. What were your mm -hmm. holidays like? Were there staycations? Did you get to explore Scotland a lot? So my my mum works in props, so she works in props for TV and film. Right, okay. Um she used to be she used to be a stage manager and then she got into TV and film. So when I was um got up about four or five, she she worked on Hamish Macbeth. Robert Carlyle. So yeah. yeah. Um and we when so basically I moved up there for like six months um and I went to school there for six right. months and it was just like incredible at Plotton. Right, okay, yeah, um, yeah, I yeah. I know I've never been, been, but I know it. Oh my it's <clears throat> stunning. It's like it's just the most beautiful, beautiful village. Um fantastic people. Um, just a really magical place to be. So that was a lot. Of this, I spent a lot of time up there when I was younger, and I've got really fond memories from being there. And that's that's when I do think about holidays. Although for me it was a holiday, you know, yeah. it was just like a big staycation for for when we were there and when my mum was working, um, and I just loved it. But holiday, I think the first we never really did. We didn't do abroad holidays. Yeah. Um. I mean, I think the first abroad holiday I had, I think I was about five and it was with my mum and dad and it was to Portugal. Um, and my dad, we, 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 we were staying in a villa um, and my dad was a big fierty. And there was one day we, we were in the, we were sharing a big room and there was a lizard on the wall. Now my mum shouted, my dad is to come and get it out. And he couldn't because he was shouting himself. So I don't know if I can swear. Um, <laughs> anyway, we never got it out. And I had been sh I'd been sharing, um, there was two single beds. And I th anyway, I had to, they made me sleep on the floor that night when there was, they, there was a lizard still in the room. And that I always used to say to my dad, can you imagine making your young ch child because you were scared of a lizard? Um, 
that was a great holiday. But no, holidays <laughs> Apart from obviously were... almost being eaten by a lizard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, I'm not even, I'm not scared of lizards. So that must have, that probably helped me out. Yeah, um, it's probably but I, crawling in beside you, just petting Yeah, exactly. Else. Exactly. But um, I spent a lot of my summers over in Ireland. Um, my mum's family are over there. Uh, so put a lot of time on the family farm, um, climbing up hay bales. And um, so, yeah, my, my summers were spent there. Um, which was incredible and my mum now lives there she's lived there for the past nine years lovely and um, my sis my sister lives there as well uh, so I'm over there quite often which is good as well for work because you can kind of use that as a base um, and obviously there's so much going on over there um, I and mean, all, yeah, all that of was... Game of Thrones was filmed over there wasn't it yeah, Belfast yeah. And, and, and the mountains of Moor. And... Braveheart, anyways. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, that's it. It's funny, I was no, th- just, just when you were talking about on holiday there, abroad, and, you know, your your your, your family making you sleep with a lizard. Um, it, it's, I, I remember, this is complete, it, it's kind of rel- relative, uh, irrelevant, but at the same time, it's nothing to do with a lizard. I remember when I was a kid, um, probably only about four or five as well, and we went on a holiday abroad, and um, I can't remember where it was, but I do remember getting carried home on my dad's shoulders, carrying me, you know, as they do, from yeah. the pub to the oh. hotel with with Swing. people with the people that we'd met. Because this is this is a thing that people don't realize about Scottish people on holiday. We find Scottish people. Oh, totally. I'm Doesn't bad for that. If I go on holiday now, I always make friends. I don't know how we do it. But yeah, we always weird, find Scottish it? people, and we yeah, always totally. end up hanging out with them. We could be both like all over the world, but we'll find Scottish people yeah. and we'll sit and have a drink with them. So <laughs> they're out with there, and we're going down, and my, my mum swears that there, and she's walking behind, and all of a sudden, you can see him starting oh. to sway a little bit, and she's going, put him down, because my dad's called Tony as well. She's like, Tony, put him down, put him down, you're going to drop him. I'm not going to drop my laddie. I'm not going to drop my <laughs> laddie. And in fairness to him, he didn't. Mm-hmm. We both went over. <laughs> oh, God. And we fell into a field. But really? the field was, there was a wall, and the field started at the height of the wall. So we didn't sort of fall over a wall and then fall back down to ground level. The, the wall came to, like, hip level anyway. Uh-huh. So we only half fell. So you were cushioned. Kind of. Could, well, at least I only fell half the height of my dad. I bet, I bet your mum was delighted with your dad. I bet she apparently, really... like, um, apparently she was just going, oh, my laddie, my laddie, oh. my laddie. As I'm five years old, crawling about this field in the dark, going, mum. <laughs> oh, dear. See, but that's a memory you've got, you yeah, know. But these, these are the things our Scottish parents did to us. <laughs> oh, of course, yeah. <laughs> I tell you. The, pub, the pub child, you get a packet of crisps. Yeah. And sit. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. And you, that was always a big bit about going on holiday as well, making friends with other yeah. kids. Oh my god! I, yeah, totally. It was a totally. big. It, got... it was a big part of it, and I remember mm. staying friends with some of them for a while, even though we lived nowhere near each other. I remember staying friends with a few yeah. people for a while. I know it's funny, isn't it? I know. Well, I wonder when we'll. I'm looking. I'm desperate for an abroad holiday, some sun and yeah. sea. Yeah, my my it's my, wife, <laughs> my wife's uh, definitely like we need to go away now. We need to go away. We need to. She mm. want to take her little one to Disney. Um, well, I'm my plan. That's I'm taking my daughter to Disneyland Paris in January, and at the end of January. So that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking Disney. She's yeah. want us to go to Disney World because yeah. that's a big part of her. Like I I proposed at Disney World. Oh, did you? We got married at Disney World. Wow! So, so she's like, we need to take our daughter, and I'm like, oh, we will, yeah. but we can't afford that right now. So Disneyland Paris is it's there, it's right there, it's there, yep, it's there, and also in her wee mind, she won't know. Oh, she won't Disneyland know. Paris from Disney World. It will still be the magic. She can barely speak English yet. She's not going to <laughs> exactly. French. That doesn't matter. Let's be honest. You and your wife want to go. It's all it's, that's what I'm thinking. I'm going yeah, to say it's about Anna. Really, I want to go. It's true. It's true. Mm. What we're talking about traveling then and gigs and mm. stuff. So, 
I mean, you've done a fair bit of theatre and everything as well. So what's your, do you have a part of Scotland that if you're on a tour or anything, you'd like, I love going there. I love going there. Um, we've done, lo- so I, I toured, I've done little tours with um, like Benny Lynch and things. And I loved, um, I've only done, done D-Rep once. <clears throat> um and I, I loved Dundee Rep. I thought that was a great week. I just I don't know if it was I enjoyed the performance or whatever, but I just I just really liked it there. <laughs> oh, um, me. No, <coughs> I'll just choke away in the corner here. <clears throat> um but I mean yeah, I, I, I think my my heart's totally with the Kings. That's my that's it, it really idea. is. And I it's probably that. because I've spent so much time there. Yeah. Um, and also, you know, from growing up as well with my dad, it's I just think it's just such a fantastic theatre. And it's um, it's a beautiful theatre. It really we, is. We were there just a couple of weeks ago, actually going to see Alan Stewart's big variety show. Yeah. And um, I think we're we're at the point right now with the little one. It's easier for us to go to matinees than evening of course, shows. Yeah. Oh yeah. Just easier. Get get mm. a babysit for a couple of hours, then we can get our home at night time. Um, and it was it was quieter than I'd seen it for a little while because it was a matinee, mm. you know, it's a different audience, yeah. and it was daytime, so it was brighter as well. So it was a proper chance to look at the theatre when it's not, you know, masses of crowds of people going in. Of course, and I think they were still restricting the numbers maybe a little bit. Yeah. Longer, so. um, and when you look at it, just the decoration in that oh, auditorium, it's, it's totally. It's gorgeous and the amazing John Byrne mural as well. And um, oh no, it's just, I just that's definitely where my heart is when it, when it comes to theatres. I'd say, but that's you know I've spent so much time there. Grew up there, used to sit in the wings watching my dad, and um, but also I just love Edinburgh. Um, it's such a gorgeous city. So um, I mean, I'm not yeah, going to argue. I'm not going to argue with you there. I'm not going. I, I, I love it Edinburgh, is. but then as a glass, as a Glasgow last to have a soft spot for Edinburgh. <laughs> Well, I know, I know. But that's the thing. It's like, I love to visit Edinburgh. I love to spend time there. But Glasgow has my heart. That's, I mean, that's fair. It has my heart. That's fair. Um, but it is, it's just, I find, and I, you know, just walking around the old town and everything, there's something about it. It kind of it feels like you're you're going back in time. And I love that, that feeling. Um, and actually, when we're doing panto, I was trying to drag people. I was like, can we please go on a ghost tour? Can we go to the vaults? And everyone was like, that, mm, not. <laughs> so I was going to go myself. I was planning to go myself, but then we got, we got shut down. I came back to Glasgow. So, But I'm, so, I'm, I will do it at some point. I'm just loving the idea of you trying to get everyone going. They're just like, nah. no. No, it was that kind of, it was that kind of way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, no, we'll, we'll plan that. Yeah. And then, and then the, the Scottish Everyone government shut us all down. Slowly and like, walks, well, that's it. They're like, yes, we don't need to do the ghost tour. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Every cloud. Like, there's some incredible ghost tours, though. They're great. Yeah, I love, yeah. well, I love all that. Have you been into the vaults? Have you been? I went, God, I must have been, I was probably about 10 or something. I was really young. But I, and I think that's probably where my wanting to go comes right. from because I loved it. Um, because I was always my da- when my dad lived in London, I was ob- obsessed. Probably isn't the right word, but I was fascinated by Jack the Ripper and you know all of that. And I still am. I'm I, you know I'm always reading books about gore and serial killers. This is, this, <laughs> this, this is a thing with it totally, and, and I don't mean this in a, in, a, in a sexist way or anything. But my wife's the same. There's 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 a, a thing about a, a lot of ladies like reading about serial killers. It's it or is, watching it's, YouTube videos about yeah, serial killers. Yeah. I mean it is bizarre, isn't it? I don't know where that comes from, but it's yeah, it's a fascination. Oh god. It's a, um, it's a morbid fascination there. Right? It's a morbid fascination, but I think it's like I, it's that thing of oh god, here we are going in a tangent, but it, of, of how the mind works and everything and how do you how can you be so evil and all of that? And, yeah, there's a part. Um, there, there's a big part. Of that. Yeah, no, the, the vaults are incredible. I love them. I love that. I did, yeah. I've, I've been to Audrey Cave, which has got 
half of them and uh, Mercat Tours, which has kind of got the other half. And of mm. course, Mary King's Close, which is just a street, essentially, yeah. which is incredible. And it's it's be- it's it's captured history. Totally. You know I mean? that, that's exactly that's exactly it. Because it's never going to change. Mm-hmm. It's never, it's, that's exactly how it was virtually when it was built. Yeah. It's had nothing done to it apart from had some electric lights put in. And some of them yeah, are just, totally. you can see the, they're not even like hidden mm. in the walls. They're just, let's just quickly put these up, put this light up so that we're not damaging anything. It's like, it's incredible. Because do mm. you know how the, the vaults and the bridges all came about? Do you know that? No. Well, see, Edinburgh's built. Sorry, I'm going to give you a history lesson here. Hope no, please do. See, I love, I love this. Please Edinburgh's do. built on seven hills. So, right. and, and because of the nature of the, the landscape, because obviously Castle Hill and Raw Mill and everything is volcano, mm. and Arthur's Seat over there as well, it was all very uppy downy, uppy downy, uppy downy. So, when they wanted to make it sort of street level ish, they wanted to level it out. They created these bridges. So you've got uh, George Fourth Bridge, North Bridge, South Bridge, and yeah. and over the other side uh, as well. Um, and they're essentially the excuse my my sort of weird way of describing it. But the bridge goes along with the hill, and then the hill goes down, and then it comes back up like that. Oh so, right, so, that makes total sense. So they've kind of built it, and you can see that when you see when you look down from the bridges down at the cow gate. When you see the hill come down from the Royal Mile, then you've got the cow gate, and then it comes back up again the other side. So the buildings on the bridge then come down past the bridge, wherever the, wherever the, from the bridge, again, sorry, forgive my description, but the building above the bridge here, and then as the hill goes down, they've just kept building that building in line with the, with the bridge. Okay. Does that make sense? That makes total sense. Yeah. So the bridge itself has got catacomby vaults in there. So you 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 are going underneath the ground, and the idea that you're going into the bridge, you're going inside the bridge, and all these little right. vaults. And this is why they've kind of got little little paths and things on them as well. All these little vaults and streets, when they were originally built, were supposed to be for the businesses above. So like a tannery or a butcher's or something mm. like that, they could use them as storage and things like that if they wanted to, but they built them. They're not waterproof in the slightest, or at least they really weren't at the time when they were built. So all these um, businesses went in there, realized all their stock was getting ruined and very quickly moved out of them. So then the sort of, underbelly of Edinburgh, the darker side of Edinburgh, moved into all these sort of things and took over. So brothels moved into them, homeless right. people moved into them, and they got this See, I, I didn't this. know that. Yeah. Right, okay. So it's, I think it's, 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 it's where the sort of idea, I don't know if you've ever heard the myth of that Edinburgh has an underground city that they just built on top of. I remember hearing that a lot when I was a kid, and it's not actually true. There's not... True, but- there's not like but a there was life there, city, but there was yeah. in yeah. those vaults. There was an underground, towny, villagey sort of feel, darker side mm. that was underneath the streets. So that's how that's, that's all there. It's good, isn't it? It's really. <gasps> I love all. It's, I love all. Yeah. Whereas Mary, it is. Mary King's closest different. That's one of the closest that has actually been built over. They just left this close, and mm. then the city chambers got built over the top of it, and it's just still there. Um, so, it, and is it true as well? Because I I don't know where that. Uh, maybe it was when I was younger, but the, the the victims of the plague, a lot of them were were buried under um, Princess Street Gardens. There's there's three spots in Edinburgh where where they buried lots of plague victims. One was in uh, Leith Links. There was mass right. grave there. One was in Holyrood Park, and one was in the Meadows. Oh, oh right! Actually, not far from the Kings. I know where the Meadows. That's mad. Yeah, because I'd always thought that was just done. So wow. Yeah. So there's three three areas where they kind of did mass graves for victims of the plague. Yeah. Jeez, oh. Good, isn't it? It's dark. It's, 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 that it's dark, but it's it's just it's just so interesting, isn't it? It's fascinating. 
They, now this has turned into me just giving you a history lesson. Sorry, I, I love that. <laughs> I'm delighted. Um, we'll, we'll we'll get back. So, like I like I said to you kind of earlier on, um, I'm very lucky that the people that watch this they're from everywhere. They're from all over the world with with lots of Scottish heritage and everything like. And a lot of them are coming over for the first time. So I like to ask every anyone that I have on, what would be your top tips for anyone coming over? And it can be absolutely anything. It can be a favorite restaurant to oh you have to see this. Yeah, absolutely Ooh. any top tips. Obviously, apart from go to the King's Panto every Christmas. Of course, that goes without saying. That's a given. Oh, top tips. Oh, God, that's tough because there's, I mean, go up north, go, go, go to, do you know, I've found as well, and when I was younger, we'd do a lot of traveling up the highlands, and obviously it's so incredibly beautiful. Mm. But only in, the last few years in fact with my dad we'd gone out you know near the borders and and, and Fife and it's so beautiful and I've never realized how beautiful it was you know I just always thought when I thought of Scotland and its scenery I always thought up the way yeah um <clears throat> but I, I'm yeah just to remember so your dad was your dad from Perth Perth yeah, yeah. Perth yeah. so uh, you know and it's only yeah, only in the past three years I'd started going to you know Pitlochry and Dunkeld and, and just lovely. all up the, love oh my god, so lovely. But just all that way in the drive up, it's like stunning. And um, you know, I think I think when people think of Scotland, of course, Loch Lomond is beautiful and and um but I just think we're so lucky, we're surrounded by so so much. Um Anywhere in Scotland's gorgeous, really, isn't it? I mean, I think as long as you, if you're coming here, you're not going to be disappointed, really. No. You can't really go wrong because um, we've got fantastic cities. We've got, you know, we're, we're very lucky, aren't we? Yeah, we are. Um, as long as you bring a raincoat, then you're absolutely Well, fine. that's it. That's it. If you dress, it's pack, that's it. Pack for all seasons. Yeah. Pack for the snow, pack for the sun, pack for the rain. Um. Pack for the midges. Oh, the midges. The midges. We're getting There's to nothing that. worse. We're getting close to that season again. I know. Midges is something that I think anyone visiting doesn't get it. And I know other countries have got mosquitoes and things like that, which are horrible and they're nasty. But yeah. see when you, you're walking along and then all of a sudden you I'm see... I'm actually like, getting itchy. Like a hive, well, not a hive, but you know, a, yeah. a, a, just a, there, there's a just a bundle of them. Yeah, like oh yeah, for no reason, just in one bit, just waiting, <laughs> waiting for waiting for your warm skin. You used to say you used they to used... climb in the hay fields and everything like that, and hay bales and everything, because I used to do the same thing near where where I grew up. There was farms, and and the, the farmer used to put them into hay bales, and then you'd be up on them, and then you'd climb in it all day, and you'd go home, and you'd just be bitten to. Bits. Yeah, it's it's not good. There used to be, everyone lived by, well, swore by it, Avon. There was an Avon spray. Yeah. The oil spray. But now they're, like, immune to it. They've, they've oh, caught really? on. They've, like, evolved. <laughs> and now it doesn't, they just like it the doesn't taste work of it, as well. Yeah. Yeah, I remember, Cal, probably... Cal, was it Calamine Lotion that you used to mm. put on all the bites and everything? I can just remember at night time getting covered in little white dots yeah. of Calamine Lotion ah. and all the bites. Oh, not fun. So yes, that would be a bit of advice. Make sure you're you're sorted for all um all weathers and seasons. Um I mean, we're so lucky as well in Scotland for our food. Get somewhere that's you know near the sea, get all the seafood, langoustines. Oh, just like that is my heaven. <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to get off the meat at the moment. Um but I don't think I, so my aim, I think, is to become a pescatarian because I just don't think I could give up seafood. See, that that's uh, the, the complete opposite of me. Oh, really? Right. I can't eat anything from the sea. Oh, can you not? Not because I'm allergic. Not allergic. Just because you don't like it. Don't like it. And this is oh. and this is going back to my youth again when I was about four or five. I got a fish bone stuck in my throat for like a couple of days. Oh my god! And oh, that must have been awful. 
Well, I, I, I obviously I can only remember sort of a little, I remember it happened, but I remember it being uncomfortable, but that's really all I remember. And I've mm. just never been able to eat seafood since at all. So it's I a just... subconscious thing then, probably. Yeah. Oh, no. See, I adore it. In fact, on Saturday, um, my friend's birthday, we're going, there's a restaurant in Glasgow called Crab Shack. Right. And they're just open, they open an, their new restaurant on Friday. So we're going on Saturday. And I'm so excited. Hmm. oysters, langoustines, oh, I'm going for the full shebang, and I cannot wait. So, yes, if you come hmm. to Scotland, you're going to be surrounded by wonderful places to eat. It's very true. Um, it's very true. We are, on, we are lucky. While we're on that, that, that was a lovely segue you've made there for me, which is nice. I appreciate <laughs> it. Because I, I like to finish off with what I call um, difficult questions for us Scots. Okay. Well, um, so... Um, feel free, take your time. And obviously, you said you're getting off the meat, but which I'm, I'm sure means you have eaten meat, so you're able to answer some of oh, these yeah. at least mm-hmm. anyway. Um, shortbread or tablet? Shortbread. That's quite definitive. Shortbread. In fact, I had short homemade shortbread yesterday. My friend's neighbours had made shortbread, and it was the best shortbread I've ever eaten. That's that's so quite delicious. A, you know, that's quite a, a bold It's statement. a statement, I know. Yeah. But, you know, as soon as I looked at it, I just knew. But, no, definitely, I think I t- tablet, I find, obviously, it's sugar. It's just sugar. It's too sweet for me. I mean, the, too, and, the, the, I need to be in the mood for tablet. Yeah. And but you, can't the thing is, a, you can't have a lot of it. You can't have a lot, whereas shortbread... I, I, I have oh, to say, I could, I could, I could sit a with a whole pack of shortbread quite easily. Easy. Either with a cup so, of tea yes. or a glass of gold, cold milk. One of oh, things. nice. Nice. Yes, Did you, like, for, for me, it was. I've, I've said this a couple of times before, but it was a very much my grannies used to make shortbread. My mum's mum used to make mm. shortbread, and it was lovely. It was absolutely There's nothing lovely. better than homemade shortbread. Yeah. I'm going to attempt it, but I'm a great cook. I'm not a good baker. I don't it's, work well with measurements. It's difficult. It is difficult. Well, you have to be really strict. Shortbread and tablet are difficult and tablet. things to make. Well, tablet's so easy to go wrong, isn't it? You can burn the sugar. You can, or if it's granulate. Yeah, I mean, we, so tried, we tried it here before, and it essentially just ended up with sugar soup. Mm. Yeah. And also, I'd be too fear to make it because it freaks me out if I spilt it or if I burnt it. Do you know? Yeah. So Plus, it's really like you have to stir it for ages. ages. Like it, it, it would hurt. <laughs> I'm not Ooh, into that. It's hard going. <laughs> I know. I know. Uh, right. Okay. Uh, haggis, neeps, and tatties, or mints and tatties. See, this is these. These are the real questions. That's these, tough. These, are, these are the real questions. Now, I would go. I would go with mints and tatties. If there was dumplings, I love dumplings and my mints and tatties. Right, okay. But without the dumplings, I would say haggis, neeps and tatties with whiskey sauce. See, a, a, a nice whiskey sauce. Oh, I, I, I you can't beat it. No, no, I, I do like a nice whiskey sauce on my haggis, yeah. neeps and tatties. I have to say, for me, it's haggis, neeps and tatties. Yeah. Um, I, I, I like mints and tatties because I don't think you can be Scottish without really it's such a big part mm. but and again i've said this a lot mince and tat is a very family thing because everyone's recipe is different and it tastes yep yeah, totally tastes different doesn't it everywhere it you, does. you yeah well it's funny my mum i love my mum's mince and tatties love it and i love my auntie in ireland's mince and tatties but they're totally different and i know this is disgusting but for my auntie Eileen's mints and tatties in Ireland, I always add a bit of tomato sauce on top. I've heard that. I know before. it's I know that's vile, but actually it's so good. But I would only ever do it with hers. And I don't know if that's linked to my childhood. And I, I don't know. It's a weird thing. I feel like but maybe, how do you feel, feel this is like a maybe quick... your mum's gave you a row for it at one time and yeah. you went, but, right? I can't do it. And that. I just do, do it there. But here's a question for you. How do you feel about a mince sandwich? See anything on bread? I'm probably gonna eat. <laughs> yeah, I would eat it. I would eat it. I have to say, I would. I just, I just, I just, I my dad loves it. My mum loves it. 
I think it's the whole fact it kind of goes like a jelly kind of thing, doesn't it? And then you, nah. No, it's see, not I would, for me. I would, I would probably eat. If I, I mean, I bet it tastes that, delicious, but I'm would, too scared to try I it. Wouldn't, I wouldn't go out and, you know, make some mints and get some bread and make myself a sandwich. But yeah. if I had a bit of bread at the side of the plate... Yeah. Well, no, would, the thing is it needs to be cold. So it's oh, once no, the mint no, has gone no, totally no, no. cold. No, this no, is, no, no. You've lost me there. That, I know. I don't get it, but apparently it is the best. No. But I'm like, no. not not for me. No, I couldn't do that. I could, like I said, if it was if I had a bit of bread at the side of the plate, you could dip it in, I'd yeah. put a bit on and, and take a bite, that'd be fine. But no, cold mints, no. I know. I don't get it either, but it's a no. thing. It's no a one thing. my house, it's no. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Right, uh, uh, square sausage or black pudding? Square sausage. See, black pudding a, a, is a, it's a hit of a mess, really, I think. I it? do love black pudding, but square sausage. Square sausage in a Morton's roll with fried onions on top. Oh, my God. Oh, that sounds nice. Mm. Yeah, Very so nice. This and the also, this, this, These questions always just make you hungry. <laughs> well, that's it. I'm now starving. But also, if you're feeling a bit extravagant a slice of plastic cheese on top of your square sausage and then onions on top it works it does work mm, I, I don't know if i can go with that i don't know oh, if i'm sure i'm showing sure myself up here no this is still you know yeah <laughs> right. you're not going to uh, try it but i don't know i don't know um whiskey or iron brew iron brew yeah, I mean, I, that, I've that... always, I've tried so many. I used to work in a whiskey bar. I worked in the Lismore um, in Partick and we used to have whiskey tastings and stuff. And I would try, I tr tried so hard to like it. I would love to like malts and things, but my palate's just not made for it. So iron brew all the way. It's, I think I think whiskey is, is probably the epitome of an acquired taste. Yeah. You really have to learn. Oh, you have to really enjoy it. And it's, so, it's expensive, so you really have to enjoy it. Yeah, as like when I was I a kid, not when I was a kid, when I was when I was obviously over <laughs> eighteen, um, yeah. learning to like lager or beer that was an acquired taste, and but mm. I, I stuck with it. Stuck, you, know? you stuck with it. You yeah, yeah, you know, you put it, the graft in. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But yeah, I think whiskey is probably one of the the main ones that you could really say it's it. I don't think anyone's probably had a first taste of whiskey and went, and oh, gone, "Wow, cool. yeah." It's it's been you that. have to really like it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, last mm. but by no means least, and this is this is a difficult one. Uh, Tunnock's tea cakes or caramel wafers? Tunnock's tea cakes. Not that hard then. Tunnock's tea cakes. Yeah, I just love them. Oh my god, they're so good. And see, so I I love TikTok, right? I never post anything on it, but I'm always watching them. Yeah. Apparently, freeze a Tunnock's tea cake. And the marshmallow goes all chewy, and it, uh, apparently it's lovely. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a go. I've not given it a go yet, so I can't give you my verdict. But apparently that's a thing. No, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to try that as well. I'm intrigued. I mean, it makes sense, kind of, doesn't it? You oh, can imagine. Right. So it wouldn't freeze. It wouldn't freeze like an ice. You know, it wouldn't go totally hard because it's mellowy. So it'd go kind of chewy. I'm imagining something in between mallow and ice cream. Yeah. Kind of sort of thing there's, there's so a follow-up for that one though since you picked tonics tea cake actually i'm gonna okay. i'm gonna i'm gonna sneak in one more question tonics with the tonics tea cake though what do you do with the wrapper because this scrunch it up oh you have to smooth it out you have oh, to no, I, I'm, it. I'm, yeah i just go and uh, shove the tea cake in my mouth <laughs> <laughs> and then open another one yeah that's fair enough that's fair <laughs> enough i'm going to i'm going to sneak one more of these in just because okay, you're okay. a glasgow lass who loves edinburgh yep chippy sauce yes or no bear no. in mind if you say yes glasgow might hate you <laughs> no it's not for me and I'm, I'm 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 straight up i a bit of salt and tomato sauce. I don't. I rarely have vinegar, even. Oh, I, I know. I don't see that's the thing. I don't like vinegar. I don't like vinegar yeah. on my chips. And chippy sauce, I do need to be in the mood, in, and it depends on the chippy, because sometimes they can make it way too vinegary. Too vinegary. Yeah, yeah. but no, it's not for. And in fact, I've probably only had it a handful of times in my life. 
you know. I mean, they're, they're coming for Glasgow, that's, that's fair. Though. That's, that's fair, fair enough. Like I've, I've said this many times as well, I didn't realise how much of a sort of Edinburgh, East Coasty thing it was yeah. until I went anywhere else in Scotland. <laughs> they didn't have it. I went, eh, eh. It's, I know, I know, but no, it's not for me. But, I mean, not I'm not, not against it at all. I would I would have it. I wouldn't I wouldn't send it back if it was put if it was put on. Um, but yeah, I've had yeah. I've had some some Glasgow people there that are just like outright no. <laughs> it's really, like, I, I ruin the chips. Listen, I eat I eat mostly anything though, apart from mushrooms. That's that's about. But I'll I'll eat anything. <laughs> no, I like a mushroom. Not picky. Like mushroom. No, no, not for me. <laughs> not for Claire, me. this has been. Absolutely brilliant. Thank you so much for taking the time no, thank you. and chatting with me. It's been a pleasure. Oh, it's been so lovely. And thank you for, for having me. No, I was delighted you. to ask. Thank you so much. Take care of yourself. Oh, right. See you. That was lovely. That was absolutely lovely. Me and uh, me and Claire have, have had trouble over the past, uh, oh no, I want to say about a month, month and a half, trying to get our calendars to align to manage to get Claire on to do a Scottish Memories. And I'm so glad that we managed to finally to do it because it was an absolute pleasure and an honour to have Claire on. Uh, Claire, thank you so, so much once again. If you enjoyed that, as always, please remember, hit that like uh, button comment subscribe if you haven't already and if you're listening out there on podcast please remember to follow on there as well but wherever you are stay safe till next time bye humans mm-hmm.